a conducting sphere of radius r has three small cavities, also of radius r. Nope, I think, was, uh, I think that's probably supposed to mean r over 4. Uh, inside of it, as shown below, a charge Q is this, is placed on the conductor. So, yep, Q. So there's a charge Q on the outside. Placed on the conductor, we'll charge Q1 and Q2 are in cavities here, and placed in the center of cavities. What is the potential relative to infinity at the center of the third cavity, which is empty? Okay. So the idea here is there's different ways to think about potential. The way we're going to think about it here is voltage equals negative integral e dot dr dot product. R is the path that you take, um, not necessarily radially, but pretty much always radial path. And so what we want to do is we want to look at the electric field. So to think of the electric field, we're going to look at Gauss's law. So Gauss's law is integral e dot dA over a closed surface equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So what's going to happen here is this this conductor, um, it is going to, actually I'm going to draw this a little bit differently. So we have this Q1, this positive charge in the center, that's going to create an induced negative Q1 because the positive charge in the center is going to attract negative charges to the surface here, the interior cavity surface. And then that just, that's going to create a surplus of positive charges, and those positive charges are going to be on the outside like that. Same thing is going to happen with Q2, negative Q2 here, positive Q2 out here. So on the outer surface here, we have a total of Q, Q1, Q2. So we do Gauss's law, draw base a Gaussian surface um, around this, we're going to get um, an electric field. And when we do that, we look at Q enclosed, and Q enclosed, if we add up all these Qs, there's a couple different ways you can think of it. You can ignore what I did with the induced charges, or you can look at them. Either way is fine, but you'd be like, well, these the Q positive Q2, negative Q2 cancel, positive Q1, negative Q1 cancel, and we're left with this Q1, Q2, and Q. So Q enclosed is just Q1 plus Q2 plus Q enclosed. And that's the cert, that's going to be the electric field on the outside. Um, the reason that is important is because what's going to happen is these Q enclosures are going to create electric fields going this way. And I drew it that way, but really I meant radially outward. So everywhere. That's a terrible arrow, but you get the idea. And those electric fields, when we solve Gauss's law for the electric field here, we get our familiar old reliable qu equation, K Q total, which is going to be the same as Q enclosed, over R squared. When we take the, and so it's going to be an infinity, it's going to be small, zero, and it gets bigger as we get closer to the um, surface. And so it's going to kind of look like, is something kind of like, this will be, um, Distance r, this will be electric field strength, and infinity is going to look like this, and then it's going to be up to some point where this is distance r. The, once, we, once we get to the surface, once we get to the surface, we're going to be at a conductor, and there is no electric field, no net electric field in a conductor. Because the idea is a conductor, the electrons, the charges are free to move. And if there was an electric field, it would push the charges. And if it pushed the charges, then it basically, if it was a, if the electric fields didn't cancel, it just pushed all the charges to a position, so where they would cancel. So the idea being that no electric field inside a conductor. So the electric field looks like this, then down, and then over. So we're like, all right, that's the electric field, but we want to find the integral of this. And we know electric field is that. When we take the integral of that with respect to R, I'm not going to bore you with it, it's just the power rule. I have confidence. Uh, you get KQ over R. 
You might be like, hey, what happened to the negative? So it's your negative. Well, there's a negative there. You pick up a negative with the uh, R squared in the denominator. It works. And this is the formula we have for voltage potential at infinity. And when we put that in, it's going to look something kind of like this. So this will be distance R. This will be voltage. And our voltage is going to be zero infinity. It's going to look like one over R. And then unlike E, it's going to flatline because the voltage is defined is related to energy. And another definition of voltage is the amount of energy to bring a test charge of positive test charge from infinity all the way to a location. And so this is basically how much energy it takes to move that test charge up into a point. And then it's going to be free to move once we get here. So once we get it to the edge, we can move it around here all we want without any problem. It's just getting the test charge to the edge is going to be difficult. And so once we get to the edge, we can then move it any path we want. This is going to take zero energy or zero voltage, zero potential to move it from this point to that point. This, this is the imaginary test charge we're talking about because there's no electric field. It's not working against electric field. So the integral of the electric field within this region, the area under the curve where it's zero is zero. Similarly, there's no electric field inside this cavity here because there's no charge inside this cavity. If there was a charge inside the cavity, that'd be different. But there's no charge inside the cavity. So it's also free to go from here to the center. So what this question is really asking is, what is the potential at the surface of this conductor? So to do that, then we're just going to use um, I'll write total here for the total charge. We're just going to use this equation right here. And so this becomes voltage that we're looking for at the center of our third mystery sphere is going to be 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times Q total, which is, I think they're all micro and they're all positive. So it's going to be 2.64 plus 2.53 um, plus 7.45 times 10 to the negative 6 all over the radius. And they're told the radius R is 13.6. So I'm going to do 13.6 times 10 to the negative second. So 10, 10 to the negative second is the same as 10 to the second up top. Uh, 10 to the 9, 10 to the 6 becomes 10 to the third. That becomes 10 to the fifth. And so we have, go to Wolfram. We'll do 8.99, which I'm going to round to 9 for convenience. 9 times quantity, 2.64 plus 2.53 plus 7.45. And that gives us a rad, oh, divided by 13.6. That gives us a robust number of 8.35 times 10 to the fifth. And that's going to be volts. I know it feels like a lot of volts. I guess it is. Um, it's even possibly a correct answer or a possible answer, sort of. I'm going to say rounding uh, for 8.34. So that's how I would approach this problem. Kind of recap what we did here. It asked us for potential, which is voltage. From there, we use the definition of voltage. That voltage is the integral of V equals negative E dot dr. Uh, we thought of Gauss's law. So the enclosed um, charge. We then thought about how the charge, the electric field inside a conductor is always zero by definition. Um, and so we drew a picture of the electric field from infinity to our basically the center of this sphere. Um, actually, we could take it to the center of our cavity if we wanted. We then took the integral of that and that, give, that will give us something, I guess, negative integral probably from infinity to our point. We're not going to worry too much about details because this would go from infinity to our point, the cavity. Um, take the negative integral of that and we get something that looks like this where it the potential doesn't drop back down to zero 
but it quits climbing. So, and then we just plug in numbers, everything worked great, and we get an answer. So, hope that helped. See you next time.